so glad that each of you are here this morning. We're so thankful that we can be together. Uh, thankful that uh, we had this time to study together, uh, this period of worship. Uh, as always, we pray that it's uh, beneficial uh, to each of us. I want to thank Connor for the prayer and everyone else that's uh, participated this morning. I want to welcome each of you. I want to welcome you if you're a visitor. We want to uh, extend a special welcome to you. We want you to uh, stick around. Let us get to know you. Let us get to meet you. Uh, any opportunity that you have to be back here with us, we want to encourage you uh, to do that. Uh, if you have a Bible with you this morning or uh, a Bible app on your phone, I want to encourage you to take that out. Uh, we're going to turn to a verse. Most of the verses are going to be up here uh, this morning. Uh, but I want us to read a verse together. Uh, as we begin, and I want each one of us to have it uh, there in front of us uh, as we read, uh, whether it's from our Bible or from our device. Uh, we're going to start in Galatians, and then we're going to go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, where Brother Brad read for us uh, a few minutes ago. Galatians chapter uh, 6, Paul there uh, ends, uh, begins to end that letter to the Galatians, and he says something in verse 11. He says, see with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. It's an odd statement that Paul makes there, uh, especially if you don't have any context uh, to that statement. Uh, we get some context uh, back in chapter 4 uh, about what's going on with Paul. Galatians chapter 4, verse 13, there Paul says, You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. My, prowl, my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was uh, the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Paul is dealing with a very difficult physical struggle here. Uh, we see this uh, throughout uh, several of his letters, uh, this idea that uh, he's having to have someone else write for him uh, because he can't see. Uh, many Bible scholars believe that Paul had some type of degenerative uh, eye disease, uh, possibly from when he uh, lost his eyesight on the road to Damascus. But what's important for us here is to notice that Paul was dealing with something that was very, very difficult for him. Paul essentially apologizes, saying, I'm sorry that you even have to look at me. I know that you would help me if you could. Something that's affecting him not only physically, but it's affecting him mentally and emotionally as well. We see that throughout several of his letters, this mention of this difficulty that he faces. Uh, Brother Brad this morning read from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and that's where I want us to turn together. If you have your Bible, please open to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we're going to reread those verses again, 7 through 10. Paul there, uh, again, talking about this difficulty that he has. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If you underline in your Bible, underline that last part of verse 10. That's going to be our focus this morning as we study together. When I am weak, then I am strong. Now, how do we get strength in periods or times of weakness? All of us experience that. All of us experience those things sometimes on a daily basis where we feel weak in our situation. 
There's hundreds of situations that we could think about. Uh, I put three together just for us to consider because they're fairly common for us. But you may have something different than what I thought of. How would we find strength in times of death? All of us have experienced a member of our family or someone close to us dying. How could we possibly find weakness during that time? How would Paul say, hey, when I see that weakness, that's when I'm the strongest. That's when I gain strength. It's when I deal with those things. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2 says, It's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will take it to heart. We can see there that death causes us to think. Those of us that remain see that and experience that. That difficult time. That period of weakness we can actually gain strength from. But there's other times. We could gain strength in times of sickness. As we watch those announcements scroll, we know that there are many of us who deal with periods of sickness. Very difficult times in our lives. And Paul says, that's when I gain strength. That's what Paul was dealing with, was a period of sickness, something physical in his body uh, that he was dealing with. John chapter uh, 16, verse 33. Jesus there says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We can gain strength in times of weakness because we know that there is more to this world than this world. There is more to us than just this small amount of time we spend here. And difficulties that come along are only for a moment. When we think about eternity, when we think about the big picture of our life uh, and our spiritual life, what about sin? How can we gain strength because of sin? We can. Paul says, I'm going to gain strength when I'm weak. And there is no greater time of weakness than when we sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 13, he says, Do not present your uh, members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Paul tells the Romans, sin doesn't have to control you. Sin doesn't have to rule over you. Are we all going to give in to it? Absolutely. Are we all going to have a period of weakness? Yes. But can we come out stronger after that? Can we come out stronger because of that? And I think the answer is yes as well. And Paul was dealing with something that was physical for him. We've already said that it was a mental struggle for him. It was an emotional struggle for him because he was worried about not only how he looked, but how his appearance affected other people and how it affected his ability to influence them in a positive way. All those things are true for us. You may have something else that you think of, a period of weakness for you. And I think all of the things that we're going to talk about this morning when we think about overcoming weakness 
with strength would apply to any situation that we see. And Paul gives us the recipe on how to do it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul there says, the first thing we need to do is pray. If we are looking for strength in a time of weakness, we have to ask God for it. That's what Paul says. He says, I asked God time and time and time again. And we have to do the same. The sons of Korah, in Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 and 2, he says, they say, uh, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, they know where their strength comes from. And we should too. No matter what it is we're dealing with in our life, no matter what time of weakness we are going through, we can look to God for strength. And we can overcome through Him and with Him. And God tells us that. God tells us that very thing. In Isaiah chapter 41, the prophet there talking for God to His people, 40, uh, Isaiah 41 and 10, God there says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says, I will give you the strength that you need. Doesn't matter what you're going through, whether it's physical or mental or emotional or spiritual, whatever weakness you have, I can give you strength. You can get strength through me. And that gives us hope. Paul had hope that he would overcome. Whether he physically overcame it, or whether he overcame it in eternity. Hope was there. And Paul gained strength through that. Paul gained strength through that hope. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, Now uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, the hope that we have of something greater than this, it gives us strength, it gives us joy, and it gives us peace. Because we understand that there is more than just this life. There is more than just this period of weakness that we have to deal with. And understanding that gives us that strength. Galatians chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, he says, For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Paul says we eagerly wait for it. We know that it's there, and it gives us strength, understanding that it's there. And we watch for it, and we wait for it. And that helps us overcome. But we move beyond hope, and we gain faith. We move beyond the hope that it's there, and we gain faith that it's there. And that faith causes us to act. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11 through 21, we won't read all of those verses there, but that's the complete thought uh, in your Bible, uh, that paragraph there. Ephesians chapter 3, we'll read verse 12. This is talking of Christ. He says, "...in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him." Therefore, I ask you, do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Paul says, we gain confidence because of the faith that we have. 
And that faith is through God. It's faith in Him and it's faith through Him that we gain strength. Just get down there to verse 16. It says, He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit, the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, Think about the faith that we have. We talked about this in the high school class a little bit this morning. And the difference between collective faith and our individual faith. And our individual faith causes us uh, to gain confidence in the things that we're doing. To gain confidence in the promises that God has made to us. To gain confidence in God's plan for us. And because of that, we act. We act obediently to Him because of the faith that we have in His plan for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 says, For the love of Christ compels us. Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. The faith in God and the faith in his plan shows. Paul tells the Corinthians that it compels us. God's love for us, it compels us. And the faith in His plan shows us how we're to act, how we're to uh, behave in the decisions that we're supposed to make. It causes us to act in a way that's obedient to Him. And that's beneficial for us. It's beneficial to the people that are around us when they see us act on our faith. It gives us strength. And it gives the people around us strength as well. And also, we see strength through grace. Now, grace is a difficult word for us sometimes. Sometimes I think we're reluctant to talk about it. We're reluctant for some reason to talk about God's grace. But we gain strength from it. We gain strength from God's grace that He gives to us and that He shows towards us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 2 says, Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Paul tells the Romans, we have access to God's grace. That access comes from the faith that we have, the obedience that we show to Him. And that allows us to enter God's grace. And being in the grace of God gives us great strength. We're allowed to show great strength because we understand God's grace. And we access that through faith in Him. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 9 says, Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace. Understanding what it is that God wants for us. And sometimes I think we struggle with that. Sometimes I think we're reluctant to admit that God wants us to be successful. God wants us to be with Him in eternity. And it's because of His grace that we can achieve that. 
And that should give us strength. That should give us encouragement when we understand that. So I want for us a moment to go back to 2 Corinthians 12. And I'd like for us to think about what he says in verse 10. He says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All of us on a daily basis deal with periods of weakness. Paul certainly did. But he didn't give in and he didn't give up. He did just the opposite. In dealing with times of weakness, that's when he had his most strength. And the same can be true for us. And sometimes it's difficult for us to see it. Sometimes it's difficult for us to be willing to acknowledge it. To acknowledge that we can be stronger after having dealt with something difficult. But we can. You can turn over one more page there in 2 Corinthians to chapter 13. And Paul says this, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 4, talking about Christ. Uh, Sam read this for us a few moments ago. It says, For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Paul says, there was no greater time of weakness than when Christ was on the cross. Yet there was also no greater time of strength than when Christ was on the cross. And because of that period of weakness there, we can be with Him forever. We can enjoy eternity because of that. Because of what Christ did for us. This morning you may be experiencing some period of weakness. Some difficulty that you are going through. We want you to know that strength comes out of difficulties. You can be stronger because of whatever weakness you are dealing with now. This morning, if you are here and you're not a Christian, uh, you wish to enter the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of your sins. If you have sin in your life uh, that's public, that you need to make correction of, uh, if there's any other way that we can assist you, we would invite you to come while the rest of us are standing and singing.